Hello, you're watching Telecom TV Summit on Telcos and Public Cloud. I'm Guy Daniels, Director of Content, and I am delighted to say that joining me on the programme today is Luis Fialo, who is Vice President of China Telecom Americas. Luis, good to speak with you again, because it's, it's been a while since we last spoke. Um, now, a large part of this year's summit has been devoted to the issue of multi-cloud. As we've been discovering, there's passionate views for and against. Can I, first of all, ask why China Telecom America supports the multi-cloud view and what exactly are you doing in this area? Well, Guy, first of all, thank you so much for having me. And I'm, um, it's a pleasure to speak to you again and share with some of our developments as far as you know what we how we view multi-cloud but first of all let me start off by saying that you know for us multi-cloud is the management of a variety of different resources one of them is the public cloud or access to the public cloud the other one is that you still have some uh, you know data centers some private cloud you have some branches of end users that need connectivity to the environment and you also have, you know, uh, whatever other things that may come up uh, related to gathering information and sharing information across a very global infrastructure. Uh, China Telecom and China Telecom Americas, obviously, we, we've been investing in move, migrating our business model towards uh, support of multi-cloud. And the main reason is if you think about uh, telecommunications and how it's evolved, uh, originally, one, at one time, we would actually build infrastructure to put, connect one, to one location to another location. But that has changed. The companies today, you know, uh, we had, in the U.S., there was a study done recently where 92 uh, percent of the uh, companies, uh, you know, large companies uh, in the U.S. are actually have a uh, private uh, public cloud in, uh, infrastructure. And 82% um, of them actually have multi-cloud. So the adoption rate of this cloud infrastructure and the multi-cloud infrastructure is there, okay? And I see no reason it's gonna turn back. So a company like ours, whose history is building a massive underlay network to connect all these, uh, you know, in the previously, to connect you from your one location to your other location, to your home offices and so forth, has evolved to now being able to provide a better, more secure, more, uh, uh, you know, faster uh, capability to get access to these clouds and integrate them together. As a result of that, you know, that's where our focus is. And in the Americas, we're actually evolved so much that we've stopped selling, you know, the traditional uh, local loop services, uh, and we've migrated everything towards selling SD-WAN and our cloud solutions, along with the data center services that we do provide today. And we're selling not only our capabilities, but also our parent capabilities around the world, which today comprises of reaching uh, 48, uh, 45 of the top metropolitan cities in the world in all of China. So, you know, it's a big investment, but, you know, companies like us who have already built huge networks around the world, uh, you know, we feel that that's the right strategy in helping our customers uh, as they migrate to this multi-cloud environment, which is really, an uh, you know, it's a different way of looking at it, but it's really, you know, telecom 101, but now it's just on the cloud. So as you say, it's, it's, a, it's a big investment that, that you make here. Um, and if you had to identify the main reasons for why you adopt multi-cloud, you've mentioned your, your customers and, and those large enterprise customers who, who have their own multi-clouds and you're, you're, you're connecting this together. Is, is that the fundamental reason? Is it, is it all really to do with your customers? Well, it, it, the customers obviously drive our decisions, right? But if you think about it, uh, or our own analysis is uh, we concluded that on our connectivity, you know, we can reduce costs between 15% and higher to the infrastructure that they need to be able to connect all these locations together than from the traditional way. The second thing is we can actually do it 25% faster, okay, than traditionally we've done it in the past. So now you're getting into a world where our customers are getting more control over their environment, 
getting it at cheaper costs and getting it faster. I think that's the, the, the migration of where our strategy is leading us to do this. Um, you know, the world has changed. Uh, maybe you can say that it was kickstarted with the pandemic, but the reality is that it was headed in this direction no matter what. And uh, what we're seeing is that also, you know, cloud infrastructures from the public cloud providers differ from geography to geography. So for us is being able to have a better way and more, a faster way for the, everybody to connect um, in a, you know, to that infrastructure and then also getting back into China, uh, which opens up another you know, level of complexity uh, and a different set of partners and everything else and ecosystem. So we, I think we fit in very nicely, you know, the, you know, for companies that are multinational that uh, do business in China and Asia, uh, we have a good solution. Now, you spoke about how your strategy is evolving and adapting and, and changing. And therefore, does this multi-cloud strategy you're on now, does it place more demands on you as a telco to have a comprehensive cloud native skill set available to you in-house? Yeah, that's a great question. It, it, it definitely is. The um, We are in the, in the beginning stages, I would say, of uh, uh, re sort of shuffling, uh, you know, our employee talent base. You know, if you think about the internet, right? Before the internet was X25 and other technologies, okay? You had to have engineers that understood that technology. Now we have to have engineers that not only understand cloud technology, but understands um, the different applications that are being tied into this cloud infrastructure and helping our clients understand for themselves how it's done and helping customers migrate into this environment. Um, it's a totally different mindset of what we're trying to, what we historically have done in building out, you know, point to point solutions previously. Uh, the second thing is, um, you know, the, the, the limits of where all this is going is just the beginning. If you think of, you know, the, the amount of data that's being collected on IoT devices and, you know, restored in the side, inside of a cloud. If you think about the, the future of edge computing and how that's going to drive additional uh, need for computing power at the, in different locations and then put it all together and be able to provide this in a way that a company can actually operate. Um, I think it's actually better suits for us than, you know, and actually it's, it's a change in the way we operate and how our people think. So we are much more a consulting type of organization uh, than we were previously. Well, that's really interesting to hear. And, you know, Lewis, conversely, does it also place more demands on your public cloud partners to have in-depth telco knowledge? And, and to what extent do they need to be experts in, in your kind of telco workloads? Well, some people would argue that they are telcos, right? That they've, uh, they've made huge amounts of investments into uh, their uh, public cloud infrastructure. Um, what, what they have done is they built a network that's tied to their network. So they are, you know, trying to promote the values of their infrastructure. What we are trying to do is we, we work with a variety of different uh, public cloud providers. And what we're trying to do is get access to that environment on behalf of our customers in a way that we can help them manage getting access to that infrastructure on, you know, so if there was a problem, it's sort of like managed services for the cloud. Um, in many ways, you know, we are building what I would call like a network architecture that allows us, so it's network as a service that you're gonna buy from us and you're gonna get access to this uh, public cloud infrastructure or your private cloud or your data centers or anything else you need. So for us, um, it's a continuous evolution of what we've done in the past. And I think it's, uh, it, I think most telcos would say, uh, would view the public cloud providers today as a partner because they do have value in what they're solving, but it's their value and their, their solutions made different by geography based on price and capabilities. So what we try to do is we try to help our, our, and our mutual end customers get access, for them to get access to that infrastructure. And at the same time, also take advantage of some of the infrastructure that we built because we do have our own cloud infrastructure as well. 
Well, that brings me nicely on to my, my next question, you know, and that is how does this impact your approach to, to hybrid cloud? Because you spoke earlier about having your own data centers, private cloud, as, as well as public cloud. Do, do you still differentiate between on-prem and in-cloud or are these all simply just regarded as, as, as cloud resources? That, that's, uh, that's a great question as well. So the, the reality is that everything is cloud resources, but there's on that and off that. Okay, but our on that is really to get you uh, using our resources, our underlay network, to get you access to the cloud resources that you're using. It may be a combination of public cloud, uh, uh, data centers that we provide, or data centers that you have, um, that you may want to reach. You know, for example, in our infrastructure today, in our ecosystem uh, around the world, we reach 144 data centers, right? So if you think about it, we're not only connecting you to the public cloud infrastructure, we're giving you faster capabilities to connect to data centers around the world. And we also give you access to, uh, you know, our SD-WAN services that allows you to be able to uh, see and monitor and be able to look at what's happening with the, the network. Uh, so it's all a more cohesive view of managing your business than what you would have received from us previously. And finally, Lewis, I, I fully appreciate that all telcos are different. They've all got their, their different objectives and, and they're, all, they're all focused slightly differently. But would you say that multi-cloud is the best long-term approach for them? Is multi-cloud really the model for the future for telcos? I, 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 I believe that um, we're just starting to see, you know, there was a report, I can't remember who the, who the analysts were, but it's going to grow 25% over the next 10 years, right? And it's gonna be over $30 billion marketplace. And that'll just continue to accelerate as you see more deployments, especially of the edge computing type of cloud infrastructures that are growing, that are in, in the early stages being developed. Um, I think companies like us, telecom companies, that where our value, you know, if you look at China Telecom as a whole, our, our, we have a tremendous amount of assets inside of China. Okay, outside of China, we have less. And what we're what we decided to do as a company is, hey, let's build the cloud infrastructure to help our customers outside of China get access to their cloud infrastructure that they need. And many times that includes a component inside of China. So for us, um, that's the future, right? As I mentioned to you, we stopped providing private line services in the U.S. Uh, and we did that on purpose in order to be able to focus on what we believe is the next level of communications and and to work with cloud providers, to work with an ecosystem of providers, uh, for example, companies that are providing storage services, companies that provide different types of access to different applications that businesses are using. Um, you know, we were, we're we're in the process of building out this ecosystem. And if you ask me this question three years from now, we would be a much bigger company focused on cloud with a lot more resources. And you know, the, the race is on, right? We, we're trying to build us as fast as we can. And to answer your specific question, I, I do believe you know, our industry as a whole, uh, there will be the traditional guys where they, they, they have value in what they provide as the underlying network, okay? Like our parent company does have in China. But outside of China, where our value is really in integrating all the components of both the public cloud, private cloud, data centers, and putting it all together and helping the customers uh, understand how to manage it and helping them manage it in our case. Lewis, I'll make a diary appointment for three years from now and we'll ask that question again and see where we all are. It's going to be really interesting. As always, pleasure talking with you. Thanks so much for joining us on the program. Uh, guys, my pleasure, and I look forward to seeing you in three years from now, but hopefully before then as well. Uh, but uh, as always, we really appreciate you taking the time to talk to us, and thank you.